This is Busted Pencils, fully leaded education talk. Here are your hosts, Dr. Tim Slecker and Dr. Johnny Lupinacci, educated educators talking education. There it is, Busted Pencils, fully leaded education talk, educated educators talking education. First downs, Friday nights, busting balls, you name it. That's what we're doing here. Johnny Lupinacci, how you doing, my friend? Hey, man, I'm great, Tim. It's good to see you. It's always exciting to be convening for this segment. It's probably my favorite thing of the whole week. Um, that being second to, you know, spend time with my kids, my family, and then uh, and then my team. So I'm excited about, you know, a conversation today because, man, dude, there's nothing better than being a coach and a teacher and an educator and all those things wrapped up into one role. When the guys call you coach, it's something special. <laughs> yeah, and we love it. And guess what? We've got our friend Jimmy Cusca, Coach K here, joining us again to do a little bit of breaking down this experience of what we call coaches. Jimmy, how you doing, buddy? Good, fantastic, guys. I, 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 I too look forward to this segment every week. Um, you know, I wasn't part of the segment last week, but I got 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 an education last week uh, <laughs> in listening to Mel Dow, who. Um, has a passion for sports, specifically wrestling, uh, at a very, very good uh, Stoughton program that he was the athletic director for. Um, and now, of course, he's taken that vision statewide. Um, uh, this segment, uh, for me, is also one of my highlights. Yeah, I love that. Make sure you go back and check out that episode last week. Uh, we just really name, image, and likeness. I had no idea that that was a reality dealing with high school students. We did that there. The other thing to do before we get going here, hey, check it out, man, Busted Pencils. We have our mail bag. It is 608-557-8577 is that number for the mail bag. Always looking for your comments, your criticism, your admirations, your adorations. Um, Maybe even just some plain old simple talk. 608-557-8577. That's the busted mail, busted pencils mailbag. You can get in touch with us. Let us know what's happening. Hey, ideas for Friday nights, busting balls, first downs, too. We'd love to hear from you. What would you like to hear about on this segment? If you're a coach out there listening to this and go, I want to be on, well then. We want to hear have you back. Get in touch with Coach K. We'll be there. All right, fellas. Though we're talking about our own experiences here in this idea of, well, let's call it Coach Coach K. You're already there, Coach Johnny Lupinacci and Coach Tim Slecker here. We've also had our experiences then in that standpoint of saying that, um, yeah, I know what it's like to coach. I'm going to admit off the top here. My experience coaching at the high school level was largely volunteer as a wrestling coach and mm -hmm. not as when I was a teacher. My most coaching time was actually spent with junior football when, hey. when my son was in middle school and really working in junior, junior high football. So my experience as a coach was really as a wrestling coach, volunteer, and I got to tell you what, um, trying to coach wrestling 30 years after you were a wrestler, oh my, not a good experience for those first couple of weeks. That's all I got to say. <laughs> I, I can empathize with that because uh, I jumped into coach 20 years after my playing days. I've been broadcasting for over 20 years. And then I'm like, you know, one day I, I decided, you know, uh, I'm going to coach football, right? Oh, there's a longer story to that, but I jumped in and um, a little worried because it had been so long since I've been away. But one thing that, that I learned right away is that, uh, you know, if you're an adult and you're there to help them, uh, kids generally are, are pretty good about, uh, taking that advice in stride. Um, I, I know there's a lot of horror stories about like, oh, the kids don't listen. They, they got the electronics they're on the front. And it's not really like that. A lot of them mm -hmm. that are, you know, in a sport or an ex any extra activity, band, art, whatever it is, um, you know, they, they tend to be, the more engaged type of students and they tend to be more uh, focused on what you're doing. So they tend to listen a little better. Um, I, obviously for me, it was great to get back into it. It's helped me tremendously when I do play by play uh, as a broadcaster, because now I've got, I've refreshed everything in my mind of what, instead of going back on experiences that are now in the black and white era, uh, you know, the 1990s, you know, or as my son calls it, the, the 19s uh, when he tells me that I'm old, 
uh, <laughs> um, you know, I have all these recent experiences I can share. I, I know how teams are, are, you know, what software they're using. You know, we're not mailing VHS tapes, uh, you know, overnight. It's huddle now. Uh, you, you've got a lot of different apps. You have a lot of different safety things that are in place. Um, mm. There's there's so many things that, that I've, ch- I've, I've changed in just the 20 something years from when I played to now that I'm a coach. Uh, that I can really empathize with that because it is a, a, quite an adjustment because, you know, back, you know, back in our day, uh, things were all <laughs> different. So Johnny, before you jump in though, I got to just say this, Jimmy K, Jimmy Casca, you, you brought up VHS tapes. I'm going to date myself. I'm telling you when I was playing high school football, we were watching films and I hate to say black and white, not because there wasn't color invented yet, but because our school district would not pay for color films. But we watched films, and I remember Coach Novak, whenever he was yelling at my buddy Nick Butala, boots, and he tried to hit rewind on a video that was going through in a tape, and it would get all crumpled up in the machine. Oh, man. Film day, though. Love film day after football events. Johnny Lupinacci. Well, you know, uh, fellas, it's gotten much, much better in that department. We have, you know, iPads and all kinds of like YouTube streams and, and, you know, great film footage. Uh, the second, the, the play itself is done. You can be rewinding and going over things, which is awesome because coaching is being, is, is so much like being a teacher. And, that, and this is a plug out there for anyone who's doing both or who's coming into teaching, you know, or that you're an educator and you're looking to connect find an extracurricular it doesn't even have to be a sport mm-hmm. and you don't have to be like Tim, Jimmy and I have been players. Like there's so, some of my best coaches, right. Have not been players of a sport and have been, you know, advocates of children learning and being in a space together uh, and almost every sport. And I'll say this, even like whether it's you know, the drama club, the band, all of these have training programs to learn to be a coach in. And, and it's a great opportunity for your students and for the community to learn about you and to see you in, in a different capacity as an educator. And I will just tell you, hands down, one of the best things I ever did while I was teaching in high schools and in a classroom was also being a coach. It just kind of helped facilitate that relationship, uh, built, put, brought down learning barriers for a lot of students. You know, whether they were my my athletes alone or whether they were just participants in the school community, you know, it just really helped us all be together. So just my plug uh, for anyone thinking about it and thinking, well, hey, I didn't play football. Like, trust me, they could use you. They'll find something for you to do. And Tim, you hit the nail on the head. I don't know very many coaches that aren't volunteer. This comes out of Mm. the love of the sports, a love of seeing young people doing something healthy. And, and, and that's complementary to their education. Remember, being at school is so much more than just your reading, writing, and arithmetic. Yes, those things are important, but you're also growing up in learning how to be in community. And there's no better place to do that than in a club, than in a sport, you know, than at an activity where there's some volunteer usually hmm. that's, that's sort of, you know, leading that. And it's an amazing experience and something that's ever important so that's my plug for it man that's it's such a it's such an important part of our of our education system the way you talk about the volunteerism though too i wonder if we could just engage in that discussion for a little bit between the three of us because i'm wondering we keep saying you know first of all let's stop calling them extracurriculars let's call them essentials the just part of the core whether it's whether it's football whether it's choir whether it's drama all of these activities that create the community around an entire public school Are we, what are we saying though to those who are participating when we require volunteerism in the coaching areas? Is that, is that a statement of saying like, that's why we, we actually believe in the volunteer aspect of this, or is that a devaluing of the sport where we're, let's say in the, in the case of sports right now, um, Schools, you know, we don't have enough money to, quote, pay for coaches. And so the reality is, is if we're going to have this extra, God forbid we call it an extra, then all of you are going to have to put in extra work. Parents, teachers, um, is volunteerism a problem or is there a virtue potentially on the side of having volunteerism being the way we actually bring people to a coaching realm in a coaching realm of Jimmy? What do you think? Well, I'll say this. I, I think that especially when you're talking about Wisconsin and rural public schools, that, um, you know, if you're a coach, 
you know, if you're a paid coach, it, it, you're, you're not making a whole lot per hour. <laughs> so, you know, you're getting a, maybe a thousand bucks to, 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 to do, you know, 40, 50, 60 hours a week, uh, in season, uh, more out of season, you know, being at team events, et cetera. Like there, there's, you know, the, the line between being a paid assistant coach and a volunteer coach, I, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty, uh, you know, that's a pretty fuzzy line because there, okay. there, there, you know, a lot of the coaches that are doing this in Wisconsin, um, are not doing this. They're not in it for the money. You don't make, it's not, we're not talking about deep South football, for example, where you can get a six figure salary to coach high school. It ain't like that here, uh, mm. with any sport, uh, you, you, this is a stipend for most coaches or, you know, you get an extra percentage of your base salary or whatever it is. It's, uh, we, you know, when you look at just the aspect of people coming into a program to volunteer and donate time, uh, I myself am a volunteer coach. Uh, and I, and this is my third year volunteering as a coach. And I spend a lot of time, you know, doing the data. I do our huddle. I do a lot of things with social media to market the team, try to get interest in the team. It's really hard to do sometimes when your team has the fourth longest losing streak in the state right now. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, we, you know, we do our best. We promote the kids, we stay positive and, uh, I, I know that when you have more people there that are that are involved, whether they're a coach, um, whether it's a manager, um, having somebody from another sport come over, you know, and help with a practice or, or show some technique. Uh, these are all pieces that I think add to the greater whole. Everybody that's involved, they want to be there. And from a student perspective, they don't really see the difference between an assistant coach who's paid and a volunteer coach who isn't. Um, exactly. And I'm just saying that from my own experience, if you're a coach and you're there every day, the thing that is most important to students and, and to any kid is that you're showing up and that you're there. Yeah. And what's great is so many of these different sports have, or have governing organizations that provide so much learning, even for you as a coach, right? Like I know as a hockey coach, the USA hockey provides so much training and support around you know, one, making sure I have my background check, that I have safe sport, which is making sure all of our young people stay safe, right? And then also, you know, learning about concussions, learning about all of the ways that people can be injured, both physically and mentally and emotionally. And so you learn a lot about how to support young people at the level of growth that they're at. And that's, I know that's true in football. I know that's true in wrestling. And I know that's true in so many of the other sports that I've been lucky to have been a part of both as a player, but then especially as a coach. So, you know, it's just a wonderful thing. Those volunteers are, are actually, you know, oftentimes highly qualified and not just because, Hey, they were good at this sport or they know a lot about it. Like that's just a little fraction of the benefit that young people get by having coaches. The biggest benefit is that they have an adult in their community who cares about them and who is really aware and how to help them be, you know, adults in our community to grow into that because what we know is that yes it's about the competition it's the fun of things it's playing the sport and of course you know dreams of being in the professional leagues or going to college or getting a scholarship that's just not the reality for so many of the young athletes that we teach so it's really important this is life these are life skills we're developing together when you're a grown-up you're going to lean into these habits that you form together you're going to know how to be a member of a team. You're going to learn how to lead. You're going to know how to take responsibility for things. You're going to have great time management because your homework, your health, all of those things are, are you know, taught and learned by being a member of some extracurricular. And I really say it that way because I don't want to just emphasize that this is sports. Like there's mm -hmm. so many things. You know, we have esports now, which is a huge thing for kids. We have quiz ball. You know, we have debate team. We have all of with cheer we have dance teams we have band we have all these ways that young people come together and have the opportunity to gain these life skills and all of those require leadership and coaching and so it's just a big plug it's great to be sharing that yeah that's been a big part of my life as an educator it still is even as a professor you know i love coaching the college hockey team it's invaluable to my connection to campus and community Mm. Um, and it's, it's just, it's just, it's just a great way to, I think, round out education to reinforce and support the reason why anyone's going to school is to become a better person. Right. And so, yeah, we're learning skills that we'll use on our jobs or that we'll use in the world, but also how to put those skills to work in a team setting. It's, a, it's, it's really valuable. 
you know the way you put that too johnny i I like that part where and it feels to me like there 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 is something positive about the the kind of volunteerism that makes this happen, whether you're the advisor for the debate team, whether you're the assistant wrestling coach, those ideas there too is, is that these extras or essentials, as we like to say, really do bring an opportunity of community members to come together to not just be about the academics, but to realize the whole education. That's what we're talking about. The biggest education around is not just sitting down, you know, math, reading and writing. You guys are putting out there. Jimmy K wonder though, too, as we're coming down here, closing out our man we go so fast when we do the busting ball segment though, Jimmy, Meaningful, awesome, impactful moment from coaching. Well, last year, um, I wasn't sure I was going to come back after my first year. My first year experience was a wild ride, and I have a lot of commitments in my life. So, you know, I had I had offers to go back into broadcasting on Fridays to do coach. You know, instead of coaching, I could call games for you know not a great amount of money, but like I'd get paid instead of being a volunteer and you know working seven days a week. I'd have I'd have the one night a week. Um, but I think the, what, what the most impactful thing for me was, was that last year, the students recruited me back. They found me a quick trip. They found me anywhere in town and they say, Hey, it'd be great if you came back. We really liked having you. And I never thought that there'd be a group of teenagers be like, Hey, it'd be cool if you came back and hung out and coach football with us. And that really, uh, that really meant a lot to me. I had to pay it forward this year. One of our, se- we had 12 seniors this year. One told me at practice just yesterday that he was not going to play football until I pulled him aside in our first summer contact dates and Hey, I got a big role for you. Uh, I would really like it if you came and, and you stuck with it because I think you could be a major force on the team. I could use you on special teams. Well, now he's uh, he, he almost set a school record in kick return yardage last week. And, uh, oh, by the way, he's he's probably uh, in line for an all-conference nod at safety this year. He's five foot six, and he's third on our team in tackles, which is crazy. Mm. Johnny Lupinacci, best moment. Oh, man, there's so many. I you know, know right? There's, you know, state championships, you know, national appearances, all the things, all the all the big wins and the close games and being close to young people competing is is it, the, those always rival for moments. But I have to say, um, aside from being called dad, mm. you know, every single time someone says coach, mm. it's the most impactful moment. So whether I'm at school or whether I'm grabbing a coffee in town, you know, it's 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 invaluable that's my most impactful moment you get a you get a text from a player that's you know 15 20 years past having been on your team and says you know hey coach going mm. through this and then you'll know, fill in the blank and you know when you're a coach you are really a member of your community and you're a part of someone's life in a special way and so aside from being called dad it's the it's the every single time the most impactful thing is every time i hear hey coach that's that's my most impactful moment that i've experienced Oh, man, making me think, too. So mine, I'm going to make it to this, you know, wrestling, that freshman that came out for wrestling for the first time ever. And somebody's going to say, what, their first pin? No, actually watching them get their first maneuver, their move that scored points and that ref putting up the two fingers for two points on a takedown. Watching somebody get that first takedown. Amazing. Just one of those moments. Again, you feel like Coach, Coach Tosca. Johnny Lupinacci, man, love busting balls with the two of you guys every Friday. It is awesomeness that we're here. If you love this segment and want to hear more about this segment or, again, have ideas, comments, critiques, we want to hear from you. It's 608-557-8577. We talk about this, too. Yeah, use that number, 608-557-8577. We would love to hear somebody out there who's supporting that drama club, who's supporting the choir, who's supporting the debate team. Come on Friday night lights with us, busting balls, first downs, because we want to feature you coach. Hey, I should just put it this way. Coaches, man, you guys rocked and busted pencils. 